every year about 2.5 billion gallons of untreated sewage and untreated stormwater urban runoff end up in the Anacostia and then in the Chesapeake um, s simply because there's so much rain and so much runoff that the storm systems can't accommodate it. Nancy Somerville is the CEO of the American Society of Landscape Architects, ASLA, located in downtown DC. She has an idea about one way to address the DC area's water pollution problem. According to the Potomac Conservancy, pollution from hardened landscapes like buildings and streets has become the Potomac region's fastest growing water quality problem threatening the health of the waters from which 86% of the region's residents get their drinking water. ASLA sees green roofs as one solution. So green roofs are about using that lot, that large amount of area that's roof, and putting natural vegetation back in there. So for DC, for example, here in the city, we have a really significant problem with stormwater runoff polluting the Chesapeake, the Chesapeake Bay. It's really one of the major factors of pollution in the bay and in the Anacostia area. Runoff from city streets and rooftops with untreated hot dirty stormwater is actually more of a threat to the area's water than industrial waste according to the 2008 study by the Potomac Conservancy. DC has instituted street sweeping to help combat the problem but 15 to 25 percent of the surfaces are roofs. The health of the Potomac River affects waterways and communities downstream, including the Chesapeake Bay. Nancy explains how a green roof works to mitigate water pollution. When you put a green roof in place, it works beautifully because the vegetation and the soil actually retains a lot of the rainwater. So instead, if you think about what happens when rain hits a normal roof, obviously all of that rain is going to end up as runoff and end up in the system. But with a green roof, it works just like you know, just like green, just like vegetation down on on ground level. It's it's really just like moving ground up, um, and it will hold the rain. <laughs> we actually used to look exactly like that roof. We're kind of twin buildings. They just replaced their roof, but sadly, they didn't do it with a green roof. We're still working on them. They, they could add a layer of soil and plants on top of it, um, but it gives you a nice contrast between a conventional roof and what you're able to do with it. When you think that we were just like that, the big noisy units that we have to listen to are theirs, not ours. Ours used to be right in the middle of our roof and part of the design, they were moved to the edges and tucked behind the mounds. With many of the surfaces in the DC area being office and condo building roofs, there's a lot of opportunity to add green roofs. As Nancy mentioned, green roofs store rainwater in the soil. As a result, much less water runs off a green roof. During the summer, green roofs can retain 70 to 90 percent of rainfall. That means less harmful runoff into the local waterways. Um, so what we found is as we develop, we lose the benefits of those natural vegetated systems. Um, and problems develop like pollution in stormwater runoff and urban heat island effects. Those are all things that come about because of the, the hot and the hard surfaces that have replaced vegetation. There's an initial investment that runs about $15 to $25 a square foot for a green roof versus around $15 a square foot for a standard roof. But there are savings down the road. ASLA has experienced a 10% reduction in building energy use during the winter months with their green roof, which was created in 2006. And Nancy points out that green roofs add new space to a building, raising condo and office building values. So although our little, our one little roof here isn't going to solve our city's stormwater problems, but you figure if you multiply that out across enough roofs in the city, we actually can have a really big impact on the stormwater pollution issues in our area.